Well, come on in. Let's let's do some turning. What do you say? Uh, first things first, uh, you need to subscribe, give me a like, call your mama, tell everybody you know to subscribe to my channel, and uh, I think we're going to go ahead and build something, but uh, first I think Brandy and I are going to go have some popcorn. Well, I'll catch you in a minute and then I'll show you what we're going to build. There it is. Absolutely perfect. However, if you believe this wooden skillet popped that popcorn, I've got some oceanfront property here in central Arkansas I'm going to say you. Okay, just hang in there and I'm going to show you how I made it. This is a red oak log that I just uh, got out of my stack. It's, it's been raining out there so it's it's wet on the outside, but it's been out there a long time. It ought to be pretty dry. I'll check it with a meter in a few minutes. But what I'm doing, first off, I measured across here, and from here it is, it's nine inches. By the time you come inside the half wood, you got about eight inches. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm cutting an eight inch block this way now, and then I'm going to cut it in half. And one half is going to be the bottom of my popcorn skillet, and one half is going to be the lid. So that's what we're going to do. So let's, uh, I've already cut one side. Let's go ahead and cut the other. Now, most people tell you, uh, you know, if you, you know, don't, don't cut a round log like I'm doing. Now, especially if you've got, a, you know, a, a blade that has, you know, I wouldn't say big teeth, but, you know, like this is, this is two teeth per inch. So if you've got a three or a two or something like that, they can really grab your work. So you have to really be careful. Now here, I saw a guy the other night cutting something like this, and he did he didn't he just cut it. He's I guess he's lucky. But this will grab it and it'll it'll roll it up on you. So what you gotta do, you gotta put these wedges under the front side right here. Always use two of them, and you see it won't roll now. So when you cut it, you know, you just can't roll, okay? So crack right in here. I think I'll probably cut it across that crack. Another thing, uh, when, you do, when you do this and you're squaring off both ends, you know, don't rotate your log because you when you move it from one end to the other, because you want uh, this end to be parallel with that end. Even if both of them are a little crooked, it'll be the same crooked, if you follow what I'm saying. So now, see, I can't even get it out of there. i got to get these out of the way. There they go. So now I'm going to cut it in half right across here. And roll it right here. And it looks about right. Need a little bit more right there. Okay, there you go. Here again, I'll use a wedge on each side. In fact, I'm going to get more than that. Never remove it before the blade stops. Ooh, there you go. Well, I've got them all cut out into two bowl blanks marked with 8 inch circles. Uh, naturally, the, the template there gave me the center. So what I always do, if I can find it, there it is, is I, I use a step drill at the center point and I drill like that right there, a little hole right there. And what this does for me, this is a guide I made. It has an end like that. And it will sit right in there like that, and it goes in here like that, and you've got your center, just that simple. So, I'm going to use these uh, 
These are, I use deck screws. I figure if they're strong enough for decks to swell and go up and down, they last for years, they'll work for this. And I've been using them ever since I've been turning. And I twisted off one. I've never had one break on me. And I'll drive these in. You don't really need to pre-drill these. It, uh, it does make them come out a little easier, but that's the only benefit. We, uh, this wood's got 16% moisture. Chances of it splitting one of these is pretty slim. Put them in opposite of each other. Don't tighten them all the way. Now you can get rid of this. Might as well leave it right there. Balance, there you go. There you are. Ready to put on the lace. Okay. I've got it on there and I'm getting ready to whirl it. But what I want to show you real quick, because here's, here's the rest I'm going to use. And I, I've preached this before, but here's a good example. This has got like a glob of super glue on it or something right there. So if I put it on now and I start using my tool, it would have some sort of hesitation there and cause me to have a tool mark. So I always take a little piece of sandpaper every time before I put a tool rest on. Well, not every time because sometimes I just feel it and it's okay. But that's a good idea. And I do that right here and it's all cleaned off. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here and find the middle. And about more. Tighten this part down. You know, I'll never do that again. That's just almost perfect. And tighten that part down. We're good, we're good, we're good. And we're ready to whirl it. I've already whirled it up and it starts vibrating at about 800. So that's where I'll go. This piece of wood, for some reason, has just an ungodly amount of end grain. See, look how it's all sticking up there everywhere. Now, what I did, and I tried just sanding it with just regular, you know, just sandpaper, and it just didn't seem to do it, maybe because it was too wet. And I even cut it, you know, shear cut it and everything else. It didn't seem to do any good. But what I did is I took that same little sealer I used. Here it is. It looks like milk. And... Uh, I put two heavy coats on it and let it dry overnight. Then I came out here this morning and I took a little 320 and sanded it and it comes out nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, power sander and I'm going to sand it all in. I'm going to put another coat of sealer on it. And uh, that, that ought to do it. So maybe I found a 
a better way to, you know, to fix this stuff, because you can just, well, I mean, I already got the sealer on it, but you can tell, no more than I sanded that right there, right there, it's smooth. See that? That's how, how that does. Now, okay, so let me get on with that, and I'll get back with you. Well, I wish I knew my woods better, uh, but I don't. I took this out of my pile. I've been sitting out there for almost two years. And I actually, I, I looked at the bark, and it looked like that red oak bark. But and as I turn it, I have a lot of white oak out there, too. And I, I think it's actually white oak, which is okay. Anyway, uh, what I'm showing you here is after I put the two coats on, I, I come back and I, you know, I, I turned it and sanded it a little bit. And now I'll come back and, and hit, you know, spots that are still sticking up with this palm sander. And I believe I've got 80 grit on it now. Um, I'll do this and it may, you know, get past the sealer in a couple places. So I'll seal it one more time. And then I'll hit it with 320 after I get rid of all these. You can see that right there sticking up. But the secret to using one of these is don't let it stop. Always keep it moving. Because if you let it stop for a second, you'll get a flat spot. I can guarantee it. Like this, see? Very important. This is a piece of 320. I'm just doing this for grins here. All right. See how that looks. Looks a whole lot better. All right. I'm still going to put another coat of sealer on it. Not much sense in doing this because I'll end up turning this off again anyway. Still a little bit places here and there. First time I've ever had this kind of ingrained problem. Normally it's better than this. All right, let me, uh, I'm going to blow that off, get all the, the dust out of it, and I'm going to put another coat of cedar on it. Sand it a little more and seal it again. Okay, I'll catch you in a little while. And, all right, it was just bugging me. It's about what kind of wood that was, so <clears throat> i do it. A little bit of comparison here now. I know for a fact this is white oak because I had the tree cut down in my yard and I know what it is. I know for another fact that this is red oak because it's the other half of that heart bowl I did and I brought it from my friend's house. Now here's what I cut off of that thing I'm making right now. Well, here's another piece I cut off. If you look at the inside, it sort of looks like a red oak, but I mean, there is a. I don't see a comparison. Wait a minute, I got another. Ooh! Here we go. Here's another great big piece of red oak right here. Now, this one is that great big one I did the flatter of. This is the other half of it. You can see it there pretty good. So, let's see what we got here. Well, guys, I ain't mean, just ain't seeing a match here. I don't know. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. They don't look like the same stuff. Well, it definitely is not white oak. Well, any thoughts there? Let me know in the comment section. Because I don't know. Maybe I'll have to take that down south to find out. Get on the internet and check it out here in a little while. All right. Here we go. Let's move on. All right. Well, I took and uh, steel wooled it after that and dried real good. And it, it's pretty nice. It's got a few little places, but uh, you know, I'll get those when I get the other side done. So I'm going to put the chuck on now and flip it around. I'll get her down close right here. There will work. Now I always bring the live center up. It's the way I do it. You know, everybody does it different. 
and I put a little pressure on it. Now I tighten it up. And I guarantee it will still wobble. See, it still wobbles. All right. That's good. You may, you may have wondered what this was for. Uh, I'm going to build a lid for it and I want it to fit down into that groove. Take a chance on getting too thin, so I check it pretty often. Getting pretty thin there. Yep. I'm, uh, I would say, eh, three eighths to a half. So about another run or two of that, that'll be enough, I think. Quarter inch or less. Time to leave it be, my friend. Okay. See what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and just take it out and set it over here on the table and uh, start soaking it down with sealer and then I'm going to go ahead and start the lid and then I'll come back to this. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand the inside of the bottom. I'm going to set this side aside a little while. 
and I'm going to take I'm going to take this and put it on a jam chuck and turn this off. Uh, that way I can get a head start on putting sealer down here because I might do the same thing on it that I did the rest of it. But right now I'm going to try to sand the inside of this a little bit. So I'm sure you, much as I know you guys love watching sanding, I'm going to I'm going to pass this time. Okay. I normally use a chuck for that, but a faceplate will work just as well. And I use this uh, kitchen shelf lining. I put, I put on, remember that I told you to put that dot there? Here's where it comes important, right here. Up here like that, right there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you want to put a considerable amount of pressure on this. You don't want to bust it or nothing, but you do want it. And you make sure to tie it all down right there. And let's see how bad it's going to wobble. Well, that's really not bad at all. That's good. Okay, get my garb on. doing now is checking to make sure it's concave and it is so let's see what we got here it's a little rough in there I'm gonna have Time I made that one more cut. <clears throat> it worked out so good, did it? All right. Maybe old nub is a little bigger than I wanted. All right, I've got the lid mounted, so I'm going to whittle it down a little bit and uh, see what we come up with. I'm going to use this 5 8 bowl gouge again, being it's plenty sharp. I, so Next thing I'm going to do is, is I went ahead and, and took those grooves in this crack, filled them with sawdust, 
and I'm going to sand that down smooth and hopefully these will sort of show up and then I'll take this and go turn a, a knob to go on top and drill a hole with a little pin and that'll be that. So let's get on with this right here. I'm going to use a round nose scraper. shine on it. But there it is, guys. All right, hold just a minute. All right, that, that's what it's going to look like. Next step is to uh, mix up the epoxy and get the two parts glued on and then it'll be uh, some sealing, a little sanding, and putting a little poly on it and this sap sucker will be done. That looks good to me. All right, now this this over here, see I put a dowel pin in it. Real good tail pin, evidently. Well, it don't look like I'm going to have to uh, foxy that pin in, does it? All right, I've got it. Uh, I just put oak. I know it's a kind of oak, so uh, that's what I did. I don't know if it's white oak or red oak or post oak. But I guess hickory's even a kind of oak. So here you go. When that gets done, I'll bring it out and uh, I'll have, I'm going to have to sand it again, hand sand it. Because I let it sit all night with two or three coats of good cedar on it. And I get done with that, uh, we'll sand it and clean it up a little bit and spray some poly on it. And this that sucker will be done. Okay, I've got, I've got the, uh, the laser done. Here it is. Looks pretty good. A little sand and get rid of that extra burn right there. Uh, I've already hand sanded the top right here. Yeah, I sanded with 320 by hand. And I'm getting ready to do the back and then and then I'll be spraying it. And we'll have ourselves a little popcorn skillet. I'll catch you when I get done. Well, I finally got done between all the interruptions and honeydews and stuff like that. So here it is. You know, I, it's just a skillet. I don't know. I call it a popcorn skillet. Cause that's just what come to mind. Brandy and I have popcorn every day, but I think it turned out pretty nice. I'll bring it in a little closer so you can see it. Uh, it's finished with uh, quite several coats of Minwax sanding sealer, and then it's a uh, spray poly. It is nice. <laughs> I said something a little funny, you'd be surprised at the people who've seen it say, well, how does that work? Want to catch fire? <laughs> I said, oh, it's, it's decorative. You just put it on the stove or something. So here's a little better look at it. There's the bottom. You can see. And the inside, the inside turned out good. Here's the lid. It all seems to fit together real good. I was thinking maybe it might move a little, but uh, it hadn't moved in hardly any yet. The uh, the handle is walnut. It's glued on with epoxy, and, and this little knob on the top I thought was walnut, but it, it ended up being a piece of that uh, railroad wood. You know, if you look way back on my video, a video called something like, you know, making a bowl from railroad tie or something like that. So some kind of exotic woods. I had a lot of people tell me a lot of different things, but no, I don't know any, any of them that, you know, I would say, you know, can verify that they hit the button because I, I looked and all over the place and I, I can't find out for sure what it is. But anyway, you know, it, it may look like that because of creosote in it. 
I knew, I knew the minute I started turning it, that's what it was, because it stunk. It smelled like creosote. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot. Hope you have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. This is Christmas morning. It's later on in the morning after everything happened. So, um, tell your friends, subscribe, give me a like. You know, like I always say, call your mama. And whatever you do, Keep them whirling.